right. Hello, my friends. Happy Friday. Yeah. It's been, so, it's been so long. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone really fast. Um, welcome to class. This is going to be so fun. Before we get started, make sure you put your name and your pronouns um, in your name, if that's important to you. Um, so I don't misgender you if we have a conversation at some point in this class, which we definitely will, because we'll be opening for questions. And oops, I'm just going to mute this person who's not muted. And as we're entering the space, I would love to know who you are, <laughs> who are you, and where you're tuning in from in the world, and maybe what um, what you're here to learn today or what you're here to talk about today, because I'm going to learn from you, you're going to learn from me, we're all going to have a good time. Um, so go, go ahead and hit me up in the chat. What's your name, your pronouns, where you're tuning in from, and what you're here to learn. Um, I'll make sure that my pronouns are in my name. And the way to just add your pronouns into your name is to find yourself under the participants tab and then hit rename. And then you can just add your pronouns, which is so easy. So so easy. Why, why wouldn't we do it, right? Hi, Desiree. Good to see you. I see so many familiar faces. Hello. Hi, my North Noters. I love you so much. It's so good to see you. Hi, Adria. Adria, I've gotten to see you twice today, which is two times more than most days, and I'm feeling hashtag blessed. <laughs> okay, so as we all flow into, hey, Alyssa, hey, Sarah, hey, Emma, hey, Mia. Oh, so many homies, I love this. Um, this might be the first time we're meeting. Hi, I'm Michelle, I'm, I'll introduce myself in a second, but one thing you do need to know about me is that I get stage fright, um, so even on the internet. Uh, so I always pull a card before I teach class just to remind myself to chill the fuck out, unclench my butthole. And uh, that this is, I'm here for you. I'm not like here to show off. I'm just here to like deliver information and um, that's my only job. So I'm gonna pull a card, but I'd love to hear what deck you want me to pull from. Cause I have like, mm, I think I have 17 decks now. It's just slightly problematic, um, but I've got this cool mystical shaman oracle deck, which I'm kind of vibing with lately. And then I've got old, old dependable archetypes deck by Kim Kranz. And then finally, I've got the inner compass deck, which is really cool and really minimalist and chic. So let me know what you what you think in the chat. Oracle, yes. Inner compass, inner compass. Ooh, if I don't hear any more. Okay, let's do inner compass. Wild card, love that. All right, so I'm going to just pull a card for us and then we'll jump right into class. And heads up, I'm recording this. So uh, if you need to like leave, <laughs> if you're like, I have hit my Zoom capacity, that's totally fine. I'll send you the replay later. Um, but I'll miss you because I'm way more fun live than I am on replay. I know that for sure. Um, okay, so I'm just going to shuffle these. I really love. This deck yesterday, I pulled Magnet, Magnetize, which I had never gotten before. Don't you love when you pull a, a card for another person that you've never pulled inside a deck that you use like almost every single day? My favorite, that's my favorite feeling. It's just like, I didn't know you had that in you. Wow, cool, learning so much. All right. Ah, the card is Harvest. And um, unfortunately, because I'm a hologram, it might be difficult to see, but um, there you go. It looks like that. I'll read it out loud to you right now, but it's really beautiful. I'll put a picture inside of Mighty Network so you can get it in in all of its glory. Um, but the card is Harvest. And we'll go through this quickly and then we'll get come, jump into class. The time to harvest has come. You've planted your seed and now is the time to pick the fruit. This card points to a period of plentitude and joy. We'll take that. Harvest is the time to step back from your hard work and enjoy your own creation. No matter how great or poor your crop is, you can be thankful for it. Your attitude towards the result is crucial. It shows the extent to which you accept and trust yourself. Is your harvest plentiful? Be grateful for how true to yourself you are. Is it poor? Be grateful for the mirror. It gives you the chance to redirect your path. Do you want abundance and an inexhaustible yield in your life? Follow your feelings of joy. You shall get what you want. Be grateful and trusting the horn of plenty will come your way. The universe does not know the concept of scarcity. Everything is available for everyone all of the time. I couldn't have asked for a better card. 
Oh, universe delivers. Goddess delivers. Uh, does that does that card resonate with anyone? Just pop into the chat and let me know if, if it did, or you can do like this or something on the on the Zoom video. Um, I would love to know if that resonated. I also personally love if uh, you pick an emoji and you pop into the chat whenever something feels like you're vibing on it, because I just think that's really fun. Um, okay, full moon energy. Yes, full moon energy, full moon tomorrow. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to go quickly read through these comments and just see, I can't really see you. Chris, it's because I am um, a hologram. So it's okay. <laughs> You're not going to, I have a slideshow. I'm, my face is not important at all. Uh, just listen to the sound of my voice. I will guide you through this. Um, and okay, just finished an herbal conference day. So very poignant. Nice. How do you do an emoji? Um, I, you know, I have it on my computer. I don't know how to I don't know how, I guess it depends on your device, but it's okay if you don't use an emoji, you can also just send a hell yeah or something like that. So I'm just looking through to make sure that I, I can see what everyone is desiring so I can make sure that I deliver in this class on what you're wanting to understand and learn about building a magical community. Cool. Want to take my community connection deeper. Um, my mind is open. See what I can learn. Okay, cool, Sarah. Excited to learn from a community queen. Oh, stop it. Uh, that's, that's, I'm very grateful for that. Um, cool. Beautiful. All right. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and just pin my video up at the top here. And I'm a co-founder of an existing community that has stalled. Ooh, yeah, it's tough when community uh, stops growing for some reason. And there's definitely a way to troubleshoot that. So hopefully this will be useful for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And voila, say so. And we'll get into today's class. I'm going to make myself a little smaller. Um, I'm so, so, so excited that you're here and grateful that you're here. Thank you for making the space on a Friday night of all nights um, before a full moon. And I cannot wait to talk more about building a mag magical community with you. This is one of my favorite topics to cover. And I probably could write and teach a college course over like quarters and years on this topic. And um, as I learn more, I'd probably add more to it, but I'm gonna give you as much as I possibly can in the next hour and be as thoughtful and deliberate with my words and our time together as I possibly can and make this as valuable uh, as, I, as, as I can because your time is important. And I just love this, I love this concept and I love this topic. So I might say the fuck word, I might get excited, I might start sweating. Let's just go with it. I'm a human. I also might make mistakes. Again, I'm a human who gets stage fright. So I really appreciate your grace. And I'm just really excited that you're here. Um, so let's jump in, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and make my screen full and make myself small. We're talking about building a magical community. Um, all right. So I love talking about community because community is the vehicle that will get you anywhere that you want. I think that you know, I'm teaching this, this series of classes called Recession Proof Skills because I teach about intuitive business and because I believe that when you are aligned in your purpose and in the way that you approach your work, it can be simple. It doesn't always mean it's easy, but it can be simple and it can yield to that abundant harvest, like the card that we pulled earlier. And I think that most of the time, an intuitive business starts with community. So understanding how to build community is one of those invaluable recession-proof skills that no matter what, no matter whether you're starting your own business, whether you're joining as a consultant with another brand, whether you're coming on as an employee, it's something that you need to know and understand. And it's also something that can't just be bought, which we'll talk about in a second. So it's a really um, tricky concept and sort of like tenuous concept to sort of, to sort of learn and embody. But once you do, you are invaluable to any company that you work for. And more important, well, not more importantly, entrepreneurship isn't for everyone. But if you want to run your own thing, if you want to have your own business, if you want to be your own, I don't know, boss witch, then running and learning how to build a community for yourself is, I think, key to your success. And I'm going to just start by saying I read something uh, this week that really resonated with me that I wanted to share and just mirror back to you. This week, I took this class on cutting your own bangs, which I'm obsessed with. I mean, TBD if my bangs turned out that great, but I had so much fun learning from this amazing hairstylist. And she was talking about, you know, her, her 
sessions usually are like $600 to get a haircut from her. And she was talking about how she's giving away her secret sauce for free. She's teaching people how to cut their own hair and they're doing fucking awesome jobs for free. And I just was so inspired by that. And, um, and I had such a great experience and, you know, she said, master chefs give their best stuff away. The masters, the people who like know their shit, they always give their best stuff away. Now they don't always give it away for free. You know, your master chef gives it away, maybe in a cookbook or maybe like Julia Child, but uh, it's something that you pay for, but they still, they don't hoard that information, right? They know that their gifts come in that unique, special way that like they deliver that plate in front of you. It's not in the technique. It's not in the framework. It's in all the other stuff inside of it. And I just love that. It, it, it made me so excited and happy. And I also love this gift. Any excuse to use a Julia Child gift, am I right? Um, did you guys know she was a spy? I think that's so cool. I mean, we love a multi-hyphenate queen. Okay. So Hi, I'm Michelle. Um, for those of you who I haven't met on the internet before, I'm so happy that you're here. Welcome. A couple things that you need to know about me. Why am I teaching you this class? I'm going to go really fast. I am a witch. I'm an Italian witch. I have the arm hair and the uh, altar to prove it. I am very, very, very Italian. Um, and I love using spell work and ritual in my life and not just in my sort of like mystical life, but in my everyday life. And so I actually have a spell candle burning right now. I did a ritual before this and pretty much everything I do and the way that I approach business comes from a mystical and magical perspective. Um, so if you don't like that tough titties, cause that's what this class is all about. And I'm a Pisces. Pisces sun, cancer rising, Scorpio moon, which means I have a lot of feelings. I love to cry. And um, I also love to laugh. So you're going to see a lot of gifts throughout this presentation. I'm a huge fan of hobbies. Like, I think that hobbies are, are amazing. Like, why don't we do them more? I'm just so sick of people trying to like embody capitalism all the time and take like the things that interest them and try to make money out of them. I don't think that that's the reason to live or to exist. I don't think we need to monetize every single thing that we do. Some hobbies that I'm trying lately are cutting my own hair. Um, I have a lot of it. So I think that that hobby will last me for a little bit and longboard dancing, which I am terrible at, but it's really fun. And I got my start learning about intuitive business as a startup employee. And I worked in tech and the startup world for six or seven years. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot about what not to do, but I also learned about how to scale businesses and companies and audiences and communities from literally zero people, from idea, from iteration, all the way to millions of subscribers and clients and millions and millions of dollars in revenue, um, which was a really interesting experience. And I think that there are a lot of things that we can take from that and do our own way. And finally, I'm the head witch in charge at Holisticism, which started as an email that I sent out to about 100 people four years ago. And it has grown to a community of over 75,000 people, um, tens of thousands of students at this point. And it's just a really cool, I mean, amazing community that you're part of. And um, it's been the joy of my life and such a delight. And it all started with community building. And I had no money when I started, zero budget, and um, was doing this thing by myself and definitely didn't know what I was doing. I made a lot of mistakes. I'm a four, six projector. So my sort of role in life is to make a lot of mistakes and then teach you how to not make those mistakes and make your life a lot easier so that you can have all the success without all of the pain that I had to go through. Okay. So, uh, that's where we're, that's me. That's the important stuff. That's what you need to know. Now let's talk about what we're going to do today. First off, it's a good day to have a good day. I just wanted to say that because it's been a really tough week for a lot of people. So, and a tough month, honestly, a tough year. Um, so even if just for this hour, like you're able to, I'm able to bring a little light to you. Um, that's my goal. That's what I, I want to help you do. Whether it's a good, good hour or a good day or a good week or a good month, I would like to like deliver some of that goodness for you. Um, but some things that we're going to talk about are an audience versus a community. What's the difference? Uh, community building as spell work. Told you I was a witch. Um, creating super fans and exactly how to do that. And then finally, feedback and failure. <laughs> or like deuces, I'm going to leave before that one. No, that's actually the most important part. We got to talk about failure. We got to talk about feedback. It's, it's really, really important. So let's get into it. First, audience versus community. In a fight, 
who were to win? What's the difference? I would love to hear. I mean, I feel like the answer is obvious. This class is about community building, but I would love to hear in the chat, who do you think would win audience or community? Or are you like, Michelle, there's no difference. This is a trick question. Uh, community. Yes. You're so smart. Great answers. Everyone. Yes. Gold star for you. Gold stars all around. Exactly. This class is about community. So I'm going to say community. And that doesn't mean that audiences are bad. Far from it. Like we need audiences. Audiences exist on all the platforms. We're trying to constantly build our audience and follower account and uh, listeners on our podcast and views on our, I don't know, YouTube and people that are jumping into our clubhouse conversations, right? Audiences aren't bad, but there's a difference between an audience and a community. And if you've been having a hard time making your thing go, making your product stick, making your service take off, it might be because you're focusing more on building an audience than building a community. So an audience is just who you talk to, right? We can think about it that way. <laughs> Personally, I love Kim Kardashian and she's gonna be on like the next five slides. So I hope that you're okay with that. Um, your audience centers around you, right? Or an individual or a specific product or a specific idea and what you or that brand or that company has to say. Your audience are the people sitting in the audience listening and witnessing, right? So on platforms like Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, um, a little bit on Clubhouse, depending on how you use it in a podcast, we're building an audience. We're getting a captive group of people to listen to what we have to say. And they might listen to you, you know, like just because someone's in your audience doesn't mean that they're going to take what you say to heart and embody it and like believe it 100%. They might though, they might. <sighs> Audiences and many of our Instagram or social, social media platforms create parasocial relationships. And parasocial relationships are one-sided relationships. So if you were in a parasocial relationship in your life, perhaps with your romantic partner, it would feel very one-sided and like you were giving everything to it and they were giving absolutely nothing. And that is what we would call maybe like a stalking relationship. If you're trying to give everything to that person and they're not giving anything back to you, they're not replying. It's not so healthy, right? We don't want to perpetuate that, but that's what we create on social platforms. It's impossible for us to know every single one of our followers, even if you are amazing at connecting with your people on Instagram. It's impossible to create that type of communal relationship, something that's not a parasocial relationship, because you are sending out a message to an audience. And again, audiences aren't bad, but they're different than community. And finally, you know, an audience requires constant input from you and engagement from you in order to continue to exist. You are putting the gas in the tank. Has anyone here like reached a burnout with Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or something where you're like, I can't, I just have to stop. I need to take a break. Just like, let me know in the chat. I, I feel like every other week I like threaten to get off Instagram, but I'm too weak. I'm just, that's what I, I know that about myself. Um, considering quitting it all. Okay. Yes. I actually want to get off. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And you don't because you know that if you were to, that sort of well of people would dry up, that abundance would cease to exist because it's not self-perpetuating because it requires gas or input from you in order to continue. Right. Which sucks when you're tired, which sucks if you're lazy like me and I want to do like the least amount of work. Like I'm, I'm constantly searching for the easy pathway I'm into right now, this idea of collapsing timelines. How can I take something that's supposed to take me 10 years and make it take 10 minutes or 10 weeks? and still like enjoy that experience? How can I just make it easy? And where am I standing in the way of ease? Cause I love to make shit fucking hard. Like I love to make things difficult because I feel like I earn it when I make it difficult, right? Like I earn the reward at the end of the rainbow if I make things really, really challenging. And that's not true. <laughs> like, okay, cool. I can keep, keep living by that but I don't need to keep living by that. Does that resonate for anybody? Or am I just like speaking to the wind? Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Feeling seen, feeling seen, feeling dragged. Um, so how can we just like make our lives easier? And if we have an audience that we have to constantly like sort of keep spinning the wheel for in order to keep it going, that's going to, that doesn't leave a lot of space for ease. 
And that again, doesn't mean that an audience is bad. It just means that it doesn't leave a lot of space for ease. It means that we are constantly putting out energy in order to get something out of it. We can't rest. We don't have space to rest. And I'm like, kind of not about that life anymore, you know? And I'm so curious for you when the shit hits the fan, which it inevitably does like in any business, because we are all human. How do you think an audience responds when things go bad? I mean, you've all been on Instagram. Can you tell me in the cancel they had out? Bye. <laughs> yeah. What else happens when things don't go so well or when you make a mistake in public, when you have an audience, they turn on you quickly, people disengage, they stop believing, canceled. Yeah. And does anyone here have a massive fear of being canceled? Just like potentially maybe that's why you're not showing up is like you're really afraid of people calling you out or people turning on you or that mob mentality happening. Okay. Um, I just want you to put a pin in that and just like notice that for yourself. Yeah. When things get hard, they bail. They're like later, someone literally said bye. And can you blame them? Like when we're having, when we have a parasocial relationship with someone, when we don't really know them, when they haven't really been vulnerable with us, if they haven't seen us and acknowledged us and given us something back in return, it's really easy to write someone off. Think about when you felt, when you didn't feel seen by somebody. It, it's easy to just say, I'm not going to talk to that person anymore. I'm not going to call that friend anymore. They, they don't acknowledge me. They don't make space for me. So why would I make space for them? It makes sense. It really does make sense. We can't fault people for that. And again, audiences are bad. It's just, we have to know and understand that this is how they work. So community is different than that, right? A community is who talks with you. An audience is who you talk to. Community is who talks back. And a community centers around a cause, a purpose, the community, the collective. There's not one person at the center or one brand or one idea. You can't buy a community. You can buy an audience. And a lot of people do. And, you know, on places like Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, where it is pay to play at a certain point, especially in a business, that can work. It can, it can work to grow your audience, to grow your audience by buying your audience. But you can't buy a community. You have to earn a community because an, a community doesn't stem from parasocial relationships. It stems from real relationships. A community is cool because it's self-sufficient. Because there's no one individual at the center of it, everyone is contributing to how that community works, how it grows. It is a living, breathing organism. And everyone has the opportunity to contribute equally if they choose to, if they decide to. And that can be a lot, you know, building community isn't for everyone because it can feel like a lot to hold, especially if you're the one who's sort of leading the charge. You have to create yourself as a container for that energy and for that space and also hold the vision for what it is that you want that community to look and to feel like. Um, so I gave birth last year and my IG got much more of a personal space sense. I lost 10% of my audience, but the engagement though is so much better. Yeah, Deborah. So you're pivoting from audience to community. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And honestly, if you create a community, they're ride or die. When the shit hits the fan, when things get really hard, when you make a mistake, which we, inev we inevitably do, right? I, I make mistakes all the time. Um, they stand by you. They give you the benefit of the doubt. They call you in instead of calling you out. Because when you're connected, when we all, when we, we live by that idea that my liberation is connected to your liberation, then we don't want to leave someone behind. We don't want to just cancel someone, right? We want to call them in, ask for accountability, and then, you know, love on them, right? Because that's really what um, accountability culture is. It's, it's an act of service and it's an act of love. So there's less fear around building a community because also it's not all on your shoulders. It isn't all about you. It's not about the individual, which capitalism loves to tell us that our business and our work and what we do is all about us. And it comes all down to us. That's not true. It's a collective effort. It's, a, it's I mean, I think, I think it's a collective effort. You can think whatever you want, but Community, I think, is what we need in a very cold and hard and difficult world. Empathy is fucking sexy as hell. 
in my opinion. And I think that building community is the future and more importantly, is the thing that's gonna help you bring what you have to bring into the world because you don't need to do it alone. You're not here to exist by yourself in a bubble and to do all of this work alone and have it all be on your shoulders. You're here to be supported and resourced by the people who are here with you. Turning to the collective will heal the world. Yes, exactly, Z. So how do we like, <laughs> how do we sort of pivot from audience building to community building? Well, community is really cool because we get to fall in love with people instead of falling in love with our product, which is what an audience does, right? So when we fall in love with the people in our community, instead of the product we're trying to sell an audience, we get to fall in love with the problem, not the solution that we've created for the problem. And that's so much more interesting and also so much more expansive as a business owner, because when you fall in love with people and what is up in their life and you're trying to solve a problem for their life, there are infinite possibilities for what you can do and make. You don't just have to make one service or one product or write one book that has all the answers. You can make all the things. You can try all the things and see what sticks. And that's fucking cool in my opinion. So we're going to talk about how to build community, but before I keep going, are there any questions that I can address in the chat? And I will have time for questions at the end of this. So, um, all right, cool. I don't see anything. Lovely. Let's continue. So um, I want to just give an example of a case study uh, that we've done at the Profitable Content Creator Lab. And the Profitable Content Creator Lab, I'm actually going to talk about it at the end of this class because it opens officially on April 19th. <laughs> I made a sort of gut decision today that you may or may not be involved in. Um, and it's our course that helps people make profitable content, things like memberships and courses and ebooks and digital downloads um, and sell them to their communities. And when I decided to make this. I really wasn't on my docket. It wasn't what I wanted to do or, or make. Um, it was a month into pandemic and I was really tired and I didn't know what to do. I was hosting this series of classes. Maybe some of you attended them. We did a class every single day for um, three months for the first three months of the pandemic. And they were all free classes with um, wellness practitioners. And people kept asking me, to build them, to, to teach them how to make profitable content or how to make content that they could sell now that they couldn't go to, I don't know, their server job or they couldn't have one-on-one um, -on -one sessions live anymore. They couldn't teach dance classes. They wanted to understand how to take what they knew, their service and make it a product, a productized service. And so um, I just listened to them and I was like, okay, I guess I'll make this thing for you. And I didn't think it was gonna do very well to be honest with you. Um, and it ended up being, the best product that we've ever made. It was so fun. It like opened up, I have this image of the reading rainbow because it just like opened up the whole world to so many of us and it connected so many people. And um, it's the thing that people love the most and I'm so excited to bring it back. So that all came from our audience saying, our community saying, we need this. And I was like, but I don't want to make you that. <laughs> I really don't want to make you that. Please, it'll be so hard. And um, being able to listen and, and making it a little easier on myself. And um, it turned out beautifully. And I couldn't have predicted that. I couldn't have, you know, made that out in my mind at my, my beginning of the year plan. I had to listen to my, what my community needed. So communities are cool for like lots of reasons because they give you ideas, right? But also just like, it's generally, it's a good business practice. Communities lead to lower customer acquisition costs, which is your CAC. CAC is what you're spending in order to get people to buy your product. And typically we look at CAC in terms of Facebook ads or Instagram ads, or just like ad spend in general. What does it cost us to bring someone in? But you can also think about the amount of labor that you're putting in, in order to get a conversion or get a sale. So your CAC goes down, your customer acquisition cost goes down when you have people in your community, people who are tuning in, who are contributing, who are there to be in conversation with you. Because because they stick around. And by the way, they bring their friends in. They help you grow that community um, organically and effortlessly. Communities also lead to much higher conversion rates. We know that the key to really high conversion on a product or a service is the know, like, and trust factor. Do they know you? Do they know what you're about? Do they understand you? 
Do they like you? Uh, seems pretty self-explanatory. And do they trust you? Have you shown up consistently for them? Do they know what to get from you? Do they know what to expect from you? When you're in community with, with people, you naturally are consistent, right? You have to keep showing up for them. And so you build that know, like, and trust factor really, really quickly and really organically. It's, it's not a natural byproduct, byproduct of building community. You also have product validation when you have a community, just like the Profitable Content Creator Lab. You get to test ideas in real time and see how people respond to them or relate to them. And that means that you're going to fail fast and you're going to fail a lot. You're going to throw a lot of ideas out there and people will not like them and they will tell you. And then you'll listen to it and you'll get to a better idea. So instead of spending months ideating and building something and spending lots of time and energy doing it, only to release it and have no one buy it and no one click on it and no one interested in it, you'll start to, you'll spend a week on something. You'll get some ideas from your community. They'll say, thanks, but no thanks. And you can move on to your next thing. So it saves you a lot of time and energy and heartache, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, there's also higher retention rates when you have a community because people want to stay around. And guess what? They're not just staying around because of you and your bright, shiny face, although that's a really big part of why people stick around. They're staying around because they love the other people that they've met in this space, in this community. They love what it has to offer. And that takes a lot of pressure off of you as an individual. You're not just like this, you know, performing monkey that has to sort of show up and be amazing all the time. You get to be a human and I think that's really valuable. Um, and then finally, you have a longer lifetime value. So higher retention rate, higher and longer lifetime value, meaning that your customers or the people who end up working with you, your clients stick around for longer and they end up usually buying from you for longer. So they come back over and over and over again. If you're a service provider, that means that they don't just book one session with you. They book multiple sessions uh, over an extended of period of time. If you have a product, something like, you know, you sell oils or you have a digital product, that means that people might subscribe to that product and buy it on a monthly recurring revenue or they'll buy it over and over and over again. So instead of just buying this thing and then as soon as it runs out being like, let me try the next brand because I've created a relationship and within this community, I'll go back and rebuy this same product. Which are all good things. We love that. Yay, confetti. We love all that stuff. It's all good news. So uh, I wanna just give you a quick formula because I think it'll kind of help ground a couple of the things that we just said. And this to me is how you can kind of figure out the value of your community. So if you're thinking about making a product or a service, just period, there's an important formula that you need to know. It's your conversion rate multiplied by your co the cost of your product multiplied by the number of leads that you have. I'm actually gonna, I made a Notion document for you. I'm gonna copy it and put it into the chat. Um, everyone in meeting. So you can use this and let me actually share my screen with you. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Sarah. Let me show my, oh, hold on one sec. So, How do you mean cost for customer or cost to create? By cost, do you mean cost for customer or cost to create? I, I'm not sure I understand your question, Rose, but hopefully I can um, clarify as I'm walking you through this. So let's say that you make a, a product called Nutrition 101 and it's a course that you make, right? So you're gonna wanna put in the price of the course. How much does a single unit cost? Um, or if I were like talking about this oil, right? What's a single unit of this oil cost? And then what's your target revenue? So just like generally, how much do you want to make? Maybe you're like, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, cool. Homie, that's dope. Like, love that. Let's, let's do it. And then you're going to put in your conversion rate. Your conversion rate can be calculated. It's something that you, um, you're going to calculate and you're going to learn more about over time as you have more conversions, as you sell more things, an average conversion rate on an e-commerce site, like, um, like any, anything on Shopify, um, where someone's just landing on a web page cold from like an Instagram ad, or even from a link in something else, um, usually has anywhere from like a 0.5% conversion to like a 2% conversion rate. You can have a conversion rate that's much higher if you've got a warm community or a warm audience. Um, 
people have conversion rates as high as 20% when they're really, you know, talking to the right person and really doing that marketing effort. So setting up an email list and setting up a nurture sequence and a release runway, which we talk about in PCCL, but basically is like sort of breadcrumbing ideas and the content that leads to the product. And then you're going to, that's going to spit out the target number of sales that you're going to have to make. So in this case, if we want our revenue to be hundred thousand dollars, we're going to have to make 500 sales. And then that, that means that the number of leads that you want to get in front of is 10,000 people leads here. I use like super casually. Um, I would generally say that leads are the number of people on your email list or the number of people in your community who are highly engaged. So I wouldn't consider your leads to be your entire Instagram like account following. I would consider them to be the people who are having that conversation back with you. And so to me, that's usually the people that are on my email list who I know are showing up to things like events that I'm hosting and uh, classes that I'm teaching and whose classes I'm going to that we are really in community together. So I just think that this very, very, very basic product calculator can be really helpful um, if you are trying to just figure out what's the scope of your project going to be and how much effort should you put into it and how much do you really need to build your community in order to see results. So, you know, you don't have to have a huge community to make $10,000 off of a $200 product, um, especially if you have a high conversion rate. If you have a 10% conversion rate, that means you only need to have 500 people on your email list, 500 people in your community. And that might seem like a lot, but if you go one step at a time, you know, start with your first 50 and then get your next 50, that number grows pretty quickly. And you know, community, again, the other thing about community is that it naturally grows. It grows um, on its own organically. So let's talk about how to build and grow community because building community is spell work. It really is. It's very much the same as when you're casting a spell. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. And just like spell work, just like magic, it's simple, but it's not easy. And it's not a shortcut. So spell work and magic is not a shortcut to just getting what you want. You still have to put effort in. It just can make that road a little bit smoother and it can direct your focus and your attention. So that's all we're trying to do here. Um, Oh yeah, you're, if you want to add to this Notion doc, you need to make a duplicate at the top right corner and then you'll be able to add it to your heart's content. So let's talk about our very first thing. Number one, the first thing in building a community, you've got to build a container. Just like when you're casting a spell, you need to know what you're casting for and what kind of container that spell is going to need. So sometimes we need candle magic. Sometimes we need earth magic and we need to plant something in the soil. Sometimes we need the moon. Sometimes we need water, right? It depends on what we're trying to bring in, what we're trying to manifest, what kind of magic we're trying to bring into the world and what kind of result we want. So same thing with our community. We need to think about the container that we're building for our community. And um, I'm curious, how many of you are realizing that you can't just build community on Instagram? Just like, let me know in the chat. I'm so sorry, I hate to burst your bubble anybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And that's okay. Like that's, that's fine. You have a great audience on, on Instagram and now it's time to think about how to weave in that community element. And I love, I have a friend who's way smarter than me. Her name is Sarah. And she came up with this idea called digital campfires. And I think it's so smart because if we think about a campfire, it's where people gather, it's where people connect and there's no one leader, right? There's no one like leading the charge. Um, sometimes there is who's sort of like rounding everyone up. But the thing about a campfire is that we're all coming to it equally and we're sharing story stories and we're contributing. Right. And we're all responsible for the campfire. We're responsible for keeping that flame alive, for feeding it, for nurturing it. And then when we decide to inevitably wind it down, we have to be responsible and make sure that we do that. So ask yourself, where's your digital campfire going to be? Are you going to make a Slack group or a Facebook group or a WhatsApp channel or a mighty networks community like holisticism or something on circle, which is a really great platform that I, I absolutely love. Or maybe you're going to build a clubhouse club. Or maybe you're going to make a private Instagram that makes it really easy for people to have conversations. Or maybe you're going to have a Discord server. Or maybe you're going to have a subreddit. And that's like, that totally makes sense for your audience and for your people and for where they want to show up around that digital campfire. And I, oh, and Telegram, that is super interesting too. Agreed. Um, thanks for bringing that up. So where's your digital campfire going to be? I'm actually, I would love to just off the top of your head, seeing this list, 
where do you think your digital campfire might live? Go ahead and let me know in the chat. And we're talking digital because we're stuck in our homes right now. And I know many of you have online businesses, but you can have a real life campfire too. So you can have in-person events, you can have in-person community. If you have a store or a physical location, those are great places to have to create community. I love Slack, Mighty Networks, Circle. Circle's really cool. Circle and Mighty Networks. Geneva. Yes, I forgot to add Geneva on here. At the last minute, I was like, oh, I should add Geneva, but I didn't. So thank you, Tatiana. You're so much smarter than me. Um, what do you think of Mighty Networks for holding community? Um, Jennifer, I love Mighty Networks for holding community because that's where I have my community. So I've tried lots of things like Slack and Facebook groups and private Instagram channels. And that was the one that worked the best for me and for my people. But your people might be different. You know, you got to go where your people want to go. And on that note, you know, just because you build it, like, doesn't mean they're going to come. Unfortunately, I wish that were the case. I wish it was you just make the container and people show up. But think about a campfire. People don't just like come out of the woodwork necessarily or out of the woods. That would be horrifying. You'd be like, are you a serial killer? Can you not? I don't want to roast marshmallows with you. Um, you got to invite people. You got to get people in, right? So <laughs> I was shocked. I shocked Pikachu and people didn't instantly spring from my Patreon. Yes. Um, what if offering a free one is too exhausting for you as a projector and you prefer paid community, then you should build a paid community uh, if you want to. But I would recommend fi figuring out a way to use your energy and understand your energy and leverage your energy to make a community that isn't just paid. So I think that you can do it. There are so many different ways to build community. And as a projector, uh, who had a business by herself for the last three and a half years, I just thankfully had was able to hire a really amazing team to join me part time. But I completely understand that doing it by yourself can be really tiring. And you have to know when to rest and not just quit or not just give up. So you can figure out what you can find a way to make it work for you. You get to make the rules, you know, and when something feels draining or depleting, usually that is a good idea or like a good indicator that that's not true community because when it's all draining and weighing on you, then again, it's an audience, not a community. It's not about the collective. So we'll talk about how actually to make yourself feel less spread thin by enrolling the people in your community to step up into leadership. Okay, so number two, I love Pete Davidson. I love him so much. Number two, second thing that we're going to do with our spell work. We need to get clear on what we want. Has anyone ever cast a spell and they were like vague and then some shit happened and you were like, I didn't, I, that wasn't on the plan and I didn't know I had to not say that. <laughs> yes, it's scary. You're like, wow, I'm so powerful and also so careless. How could I be like this? So same thing with community, right? You got to get really clear on what you want and what you're creating and what you want the outcome to be. And then you want to make it very, very easy for people to say yes. In general, in intuitive business, we need to remember this idea that we need to make it easy for people to say yes. I actually just want you to think a little bit more, and I'm saying this for myself too, about how can I just make it easy? Like, how can I make it easy in general for thinking about collapsing the timeline? How can I make it easier to collapse that timeline? How can I get out of the, what if I am the thing that is in the way of things being easy? So if I were to remove myself what, and it were to naturally come together with ease and flow, what might happen? And where am I standing in the way? Okay, I'm seeing some chat stuff and I will actually also, I have plenty of time after this that we can answer questions. So, um, but I love that you all are connecting with each other. I, this is community and I love that. So, okay, let's talk about getting clear on what you want and helping making it easy for people to understand, right? People buy what they understand. So we wanna make it easy for them to say yes. We need to make it easy for them to understand what we're selling or what we want them to do. What our call to action is. So if you're taking notes, write this down. What's your call to action? What are you asking people to do? When they land on your Instagram or your website or wherever it is, is your, wherever your main page is, do they know what you, have, you want them to do? Or are you giving them lots of mis mixed signals and mixed messages? Can, if you know, or if you're super clear on what you want people to do, let me know in the chat because I would love to hear it. Sometimes you just need to put it out there and like say it into the universe. So what do you want people to do? 
I'm just curious, like, and I would love to see, what do you want people to do when they land on your website? Anybody? Yes, Bailey. <laughs> Sign up for my newsletter, buy my books, join my online challenges, work with me, self-care, go to my list, participate. Yes, buy my shit. Yes, Sarah. <laughs> uh-huh, engage. Join my online studio and my newsletter. Get in touch with me. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, cool. Buy my course. Yes, join my community. Yes, you guys. Oh, I love you so much. This is so good. Okay, so what's clear in the first five seconds of landing on your website? Because guess what? Mm, I hate to say it, but most people are going to jump off your website like immediately. If they don't see something that they like in the first 0.5 seconds, not even five seconds, they're going to be like the later deuces. Uh, there's way more interesting shit happening on TikTok. And so I am not captivated by this. And honestly, that's fine. We are the same way. I'm the same way, right? I'm like, if I, I'm so, my brain is so small. If I can't understand something within like one second, I'm like, this is too much. I need to go with the things that I understand with small brain stuff. So are you clear when someone lands on your website? Is it clear in the first five seconds of what you want them to do? And if it's not, that's the first thing that you're going to change after this class. And you're going to make it really, really clear. And that might mean for you getting some clarity on what that one action is. So if you popped in the chat and you said like this, 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 and this, mm -mm. one thing, what's the one thing you want them to do? That's the spell work, right? If we write a spell that's vague and that has like all these potential outcomes and we're like, Yes, yeah, so I would like to make $100,000. I would also like a puppy. And um, I also am interested in Hawaii. And uh, if you potentially have a lover there for me, I'd also, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> it's like, okay, all right, listen, one spell at a time, my friend, you know? <laughs> so is your, is your spell clear? And we can cast multiple spells, my dudes. Like, it's all right. But like, let's get clear on each individual step. All right, we're all interested in Hawaii. <laughs> Another thing that we just need to know and understand about human beings is that we can really only hold one idea at a time. So we can hold one single goal. This is a copywriting rule and this is also a rule in magic. We can hold one thing. We can focus on one thing and one idea. When you are casting a spell or whenever you're doing energy work, you hold a vision in your mind, right? You don't hold like five thought bu bubble visions. <laughs> Hawaii, the lover, the money, right? It's like, Here's the vision. I'm laying on the beach. I'm holding up my phone. I'm opening the Chase Bank app. It has $10,000 in it, right? So what is that one single vision? What is that one idea that you want people to hold on to and to connect to? What is your call to action? What are you asking them to do? In spell work, this is our desired outcome. And then next, oh, oh man, I, I messed up my slides. Next, we need to just like own that the magic of influence is really messy and can be really messy and can be very sketchy, you know, influencing people. It's powerful. Our job is not to control other people and it isn't to manipulate people. Our job is to help people make a decision. So you need to understand what is your ethical work to do. Now, some, which is some people who do spell work think that are like, yeah, magic of influence is part of spell work. It's not bad. And I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't disagree. Like there's some magic that's, that's potentially unethical or immoral, but that doesn't mean that it's not, we shouldn't do it in certain circumstances. Right. But we need to have our own set of ethics. And so for me as a copywriter and an intuitive business owner and someone who sells things, my job is not to sell you something or to convince you of something, nor is it to convince you of my worth or of the worth of the product that I've made. All that I'm here to do is help you make a decision. I want to get you out of pain. And there's pain when we're, we are in that moment of, of not having clarity around a choice, around whether to do something or to not do something. So think about when you're on the fence about buying a product. Maybe you're like, oh, I really wanna buy these inner compass cards. I've been thinking about them. I don't know. They're, they look really cool. The card that she pulled was awesome, but I don't know if I want them or not. And you're like refreshing the page and you're checking on them every now and then. You're just like on the fence, right? And it it's uncomfortable to be to not have clarity. What is it that Brittany Brown, Brown says? Clear is kind, unclear is unkind. Same thing in this situation. My job as the seller of these is not to get you to buy them. 
My job is to help you decide whether they're right for you or not so that you can move the fuck on with your life and you can stop worrying about this shit. Because guess what? You buying this thing doesn't matter. (laughs) <laughs> like, like I am nearly positive that this isn't going to like completely change the trajectory of your entire life, but you sitting around and worrying about this and distracting yourself with whether to make this choice or not is keeping you from being in your life and actually doing things and making way more important, bigger decisions. So it's my responsibility to help you make the decision as to whether that thing is right for you or not. So you can either move on or you can buy the thing and like start living does that make sense is this resonating for just like let me know in the chat um (laughs) okay 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 yes great um when i learned that it changed my whole life because all of a sudden i was like oh i don't have to convince people to buy things i just need to like tell them whether this thing is right or not for them i need to be perfectly honest about what they're going to get out of it and then they can like they're adults they can make their own decision And like, I don't want anyone who isn't right for me, (laughs) you know, I don't want to convince someone of like how smart and cool and awesome I am. I already know all those things. Um, I want people who see that and understand that who want to be with me and who want what I'm serving up. Okay. So let's talk about number three, the third step. Kate McKinnon, what a G. The third step is surprise and delight. Within magic, we have to make space for magic. We have to leave room for magical things to happen. And this is where we build people from fans to super fans. And this is the like tipping point in building community is when you have super fans who are out there doing the work with you to build and grow that community who are advocates of you. Okay. If you are DMing me, I love you so much. And I will definitely answer your question at the end, but maybe also I might ask you to resend it to me because it might get lost. So just a heads up, but I'm seeing your DMs and I want to answer them. I just want to give them the space that they deserve. Okay. So let me tell you a story about when I started holisticism and I'm going to turn my sides off really fast. So when I started holisticism, I was working full-time at a tech startup and um, I started this newsletter and I'm super shy and I was so embarrassed. I was like, I can't believe I'm writing a newsletter. This is so embarrassing, but I just couldn't not do this thing. And so um, I started to get people on the newsletter who I didn't know. When I first started it, it was all my friends or people I'd worked with. And as people came in that I didn't know, I wanted to understand who they were. And I was like, why are you reading? Why do you care about what I have to say? I'm not like an influencer or famous or particularly, I don't know, like saying anything particularly interesting or groundbreaking. So like, why are you here? And so I started reaching out to everyone as they added themselves to this email list, uh, which was a little bit psychotic, but like, let's take it, whatever, run with it, uh, know thyself. And I would ask them, um, how did you, how did you find this? And also, can I take you out for coffee or can I hop, hop on a phone call with you? If you're in LA, I'd love to take you to coffee. If you're not in LA, I'd love to hop on a phone call with you and just like hear about what you're into. Um, because I'm making this thing for you. So I guess I should know you. And Uh, That was insane because I did about a thousand coffees and phone calls in that first year. And I was so over caffeinated and I spent a lot of money that I didn't have on like Alfred. Um, But it was also really important work because I got to know and understand my people. Oh, Carrie Lynn, we did have coffee. See, we had coffee and now we're friends. Um, And, and a lot of people I had phone calls with who might be here. Um, And that was so important to understanding like, what people wanted and needed. And as I was able to sort of connect with them, uh, and there's probably an easier and better way to do it now, but as I was able to connect with them, they were enrolled in what we were building together. And that's something I always tried to say of like, oh, this isn't just me. This is like, we're doing this together. We're building this thing. We're we're co-creating this space. And they started to tell their friends and then they started to tell their friends. And now I, then I, all of a sudden it was like this group of people who were all enrolled in the same vision, who were sharing it with their communities. And it started to grow faster than any one person could make it grow. And that's what community is all about. It's, and that's where super fans come from. They come when you enroll people in what you're up to and you empower them to co-create and build with you. Um, so super fans come from actual connection. And when you let people know that they're seen and they're heard and they're valued, and it's, it's not for the faint of heart or for anyone who's allergic to coffee. Um, it, it really does take a lot of effort. And 
that's why community building can feel scary and can feel really intimidating and can feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know how the, if I have the energy to do this. But I guarantee you, if you trust yourself and you, you trust your own cadence um, and you trust other people to help you, that you can do it. Uh, you can, you absolutely can. So when you're thinking about surprising and delight, when you're thinking about enrolling other people, just throw out the rule book in general, throw out the things that you think you're supposed to do and just be yourself. Um, I know it's easier said than done, but I think that that's really the, the key to your success is finding your unique success path, your unique success plan. Um, a couple of things that help that make people feel related to you are hearing your voice. You know, we do so much of this of work over texting and messaging and DMs. So if you can bring back that human element and actually talk to a person, if you can DM someone back on like with a voice memo on Instagram, oh my gosh, it sounds so stupid, but it makes the biggest difference in the world. If you can reply it's when people, when you put up polls on things like your Instagrams with a direct message to the people that, that spent the time to say yes or no to whatever if you want to make the, put this playlist out or this playlist, that makes such a big difference. They are seen. And remember, community is about seeing people. And, oh man, I, I'm, I'm losing, I'm losing my face here. Um, something that I love to do, and if you don't take anything away from this, I hope that you take this away, is reply to emails with videos. Because again, like any moment that we can just infuse a little personal touch and and help people know that it's not like a canned response or message or like an assistant that's writing back for us, I think makes the biggest difference in the world. So I love this service called Loom, which many of you have probably used. Another one is called Bomb Bomb. And honestly, it takes less time to respond with a Loom message than it does like typing out a message sometimes. And it makes people feel so seen. I feel so seen. I cried one time when someone sent me a Loom message via email because I just felt so seen and heard. And it took them literally two minutes. It took them no time, but it's the moments like that, that really help you connect with and create super fans. It's these little thoughtful ideas or out of your way, just like adding a little more touch of character and empathy um, that resonate with people. And then finally, the, the way to really big, build super fans is to empower other leaders because that's what leaders do. Leaders empower other people to lead and to, they pull other people up with them as opposed to sort of pushing everyone down. Remember, an audience is when one person is like the sage on the stage. A community is when we're all sharing together. So you don't need influencers to grow. In fact, every time I've worked with influencers, it's always gone the opposite way. It hasn't gone as well as I had imagined it would. But when we empower our homegrown heroes, the people within our communities to stand up, to take a leadership position or a role, to share what they're here to share, we, when we empower them to speak and to use their voice, then they become super fans. And then that takes the weight off of you. And that builds community. And we really build community by leading by example, by showing people how to show up and how, um, how they can come to that space. And as humans, we, we love, there's a reason we have mirror neurons, right? We mimic each other to understand what's socially acceptable. So people will, will begin to mimic your behavior and you have to be really thoughtful and careful about how you enter your space and how you act in your space because people are watching and they're copying you. And that's how you build community. And that's why someone asked about being a projector. Eventually it will be lifted off your shoulders because when you're really making people feel seen and heard, they'll feel empowered to act too and show up. And it won't just be all about you. All right, number four, the fourth thing. We need to listen and adapt. This is what happens in spell work when a spell doesn't go the way that we planned. That's why we write it down. Um, does anyone have a grimoire or a spell book where they write down their answers or their questions? Anybody? Anybody or their spells? Just pop into the chat. Oh, I'm seeing some hands. Okay, great. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I can't see everyone. <laughs> um, okay, great. Yes. So we have a grimoire as witches because we are, it's like a recipe book, right? And if you like make a bunch of cupcakes and they turn out like absolute dog shit, you don't want to make that recipe again. You want to change it and make sure that it turns out better. You're not just going to throw the whole recipe away. There's probably some tinkering that you can do. Same thing with your community. Um, you're not going to like this, but increasing your fa failure tolerance is key to faster timeline collapsing. So if you want to, I've said timeline, collapse the timeline a couple times here. If you want that to happen, you need to increase your failure tolerance. 
And so many of us are afraid to fail, myself included. We're like, but that sounds horrible, but that sounds painful. And that is going to make me look stupid. Guess what? You're going to look stupid anyways. Like, hi, welcome to being a person on the planet. You're going to look stupid. It's okay. It's all fine. We survive. Um, it's not fun, but we survive. Actually, sometimes it's fun. Uh, but in order to level up or be the fullest dimension of yourself, honestly, to have fun, to, to, to do, to be, you need to increase your failure tolerance. You need to be okay failing. The first time it sucks ass. But as you practice failing more and more and more, you'll get more resilient. And you can't get more resilient unless you fail. So you're going to have to be really brave and take that big leap and fail, put yourself out there, but then that will open up so much more of the world to you. That will collapse the timelines for you more quickly. Um, if you are, are not making the amount of money that you want to make because your, your products aren't selling or your services aren't selling, I would ask you potentially to ask yourself, are you actually selling anything? Like how often are you selling something? Are you actually putting yourself out there to be rejected? Because in order to make money, in order to make sales, we have to get rejected. Remember when we were talking about conversion rate and how conversion rate on like an e-commerce store is super low. It's like 0.5%. Guess what? Like 99.5% they're getting rejected. <laughs> but that 0.5%, that conversion is when they're, someone's accepting them and they're, uh, they're not failing. And so in order to make sales, in order to make money, we have to fail. It's inevitable and that's okay. And you get better and better and better at it. People who are the best salespeople are just the ones who have the highest failure tolerance. And so to get feedback, to listen and to adapt, we need to hear what our community has to say for us. So putting out surveys, getting feedback forms, doing community calls or community forums where you're listening and you're um, taking in what people have to say. And then you're, you're, really iterating quickly, you're adding that into what you do is going to help your community grow. It's going to help people also, again, feel seen and heard. So when they give feedback and you say, all right, we're implementing that, you know, we get, we get a lot of, we don't, we fuck up a lot of holisticism. Like we try our hardest, but we don't always know what the right thing to do is. Sometimes we have a brilliant idea and it doesn't turn out the way we wanted it to, to turn out. And our community tells us, they're like, that sucked. Love you, but that sucked. And we're like, okay, great. We got to go back to the drawing board on this and make it better. And it hurts. It so hurts when you like love something and you want it to be good and you worked really hard to make it. Um, and people don't feel, don't resonate with it. But at the end of the day, I'm here to fall in love with my people and solve the problem for my people. I'm not here to be in love with the thing that I made for them. Um, and that sometimes sucks to admit. Okay. So our last final thing, number five is you just have to start to build community, you just have to start and you have to increase your failure tolerance and you have to be okay with people saying, thanks, but no thanks, you're not for me because community isn't for everyone. It isn't. If you think about a community just by nature, it's going to be smaller and more niche and more specific than an audience, right? So just start, increase your failure tolerance and learn to iterate quickly and take those ideas, right? And that feedback and that information and apply it to what you do. And that is, that's magic too, right? We can't just like sit and meditate and cross our fingers and hope that what we want comes to fruition. We have to be in action. And we begin being in action by doing ritual. And then we have to go act. We have to like go be in the world and do the things. You know, again, magic is not a shortcut. Um, it makes the road a little smoother. It's like, it paves the road for us, but we have to walk down the road. Um, how do you balance the community website with the course website? Do you find it hard to manage? Oh, I will answer that question later, but no, not really. The course website is, they're, they're not really different websites. So I can talk a little bit more that, about that in a second, but we actually talk a lot about that in Profitable Content Creator Lab. So if you wanna learn more about making a product for your community, if you're, if you're looking at that Notion document that I just shared with you and you're like, putting in numbers um, obsessively, or you're like trying out lots of different calculations, which is what I, the type of person that I am, because you wanna build a digital product or you wanna build a community or you wanna build a paid membership. You want to take the community you already have and start figure out how to monetize it and to continue to grow it. Then um, you'd be a great person to join the Profitable Content Creator Lab, which starts officially on May 3rd, but I mean, a, a game time decision. We were going to open the doors on April 19th. And I just felt like 
why? I might as well just open them today just for the people that are here. So the price of Profitable Content Creator Lab is um, $1,100. And that's what the price will be on April 19th. But because early bird special, it's $777 today. And that's actually lower than the price of the product last year. So you get a super discount, which is dope. I'm going to put the link if you want to go ahead and grab it in the chat and I'll answer lots of questions for what's coming up for you. Um, and I'm just looking at the questions. PCCL is just one time a year because of IWA. Um, yeah, we only release PCCL. Um, well, I guess now for a couple of weeks, once a year, we do it in April um, and it begins on May 3rd. It's really, it's going to be really cool. I'm so excited about it. We uh, actually made these really cool pins that are talismans. And um, so when you activate them, everyone who joins um, PCCL will get one. And um, when you activate them, they open up like their creativity spell, which is really cool. And then we've got this amazing bonus with Ariana Mag, who's going to go um, have a specific module for every human design type and talk about how to use their creativity and turn it into profitability. And then every week we're having a portal opening with Maggie Saunders, who's a hypnotherapist. So she's going to hypnotize us into deep work. And so we'll have like two and a half, three hours where you'll have a deep work session and it opens with Maggie doing a hypnosis on the group. Um, so you can like dive in and, and do your content work. And then the holisticism team is there to answer questions, but it's a really fun program. Program. more to come more info more information later um, if you've been hearing about it we've gotten lots of emails about people wanting to join and sign up and um, so we thought we'd just make it live and open in case you wanted to join now but if you you have plenty of time to make a choice so if you want to learn more about it there's plenty of time to do that how long is it it is a five-week course that we drip out but you can enjoy it at your own speed um, and if you're in the north node you get a discount code so you get uh, you get a special discount code, but I'll tell you more about that later. Um, you can DM me or you can PM me and I will give it to you. Um, so that's Profitable Content Creator Lab, which I'm just so excited about. But I want to answer the questions that came up in today's class that uh, I know that there are a lot about community. Yeah, just curious if we purchased PCCL last year, is the content updated or is this what you're talking about only for this year's class? No, when you buy any of our courses, we give you the updated version every year. So if you joined PCCL last year, you'll get the new version this year too. It's a nice thing. You also get lifetime access. Okay, cool. Question, growing email list versus community on a platform, where to focus energy if you wanna do both? Oh, good question, Mia. Um, I would focus on building community um, because your community is are going to be advocates of what you do, right? And in order to get people on a platform, you're gonna get you're gonna capture their email. So in order to join Mighty Networks, everyone had to put in their email to join, right? So any community that you build is naturally gonna build your email list too. So I think that. There's tons of value from adding people to an email list. Obviously, you're going to deliver value every week, but you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. That would that'd be my opinion. Um, it also, I'm sure, depends on the platform or the, the like sort of container you're going to use. Um, if you're going to be on something like, you know, Clubhouse, it might be a little harder to capture email, but I'm sure you could figure out how to do it. Um, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, my pleasure, Abby. Bye. Oh, have fun. Have fun cleaning up things on the beach. Oh, yes, Sam. Thank you. How do you feel into slash navigate when to cast which call to action? You mentioned not casting spells or calls to action all at the same time, but we can cast multiple spells. So curious how to discern when to do one or the other or for how long. Great question. Um, so on a page, one, one call to action, one call to action per web page, one call to action per email. That's it. Super simple. Good question. And like I said, you can have multiple spells going at, at a time, usually, right? Like sometimes you can't, but most of the time you can have multiple spells at once. It's just that we can't multitask and do magic, right? So we can't be like lighting this spell over here and then listening to a podcast and then like, you know, doing this other one, doing like a bath ritual at the same time and like recording a podcast, which I did last week in the bath. I'm so glad I didn't get, uh, <laughs> 
electrocuted. Um, so we want to just like, you know, not be multitasking too much, like keep your shit tight, you know, classic. Um, I hope that answers your question, Sam. How do I move them from Instagram, Facebook, or and email to Mighty Networks? Ah, actually, Mighty Networks is amazing at onboarding people and teaching them how to do this. So I would follow their rules and their instructions. But you want to, if you like, just think about it really, just like from an empty slate, right? I just need to incentivize people to move from one place to another. So how am I going to incentivize them? How am I going to make this community look like the fucking cool digital campfire that they want to like tune in around? What, I, what am I going to give them that's valuable and exciting and interesting? What is the reason that they'll go there? And so maybe your people don't use Mighty Networks. Maybe your people don't use Facebook. Maybe you need to find a platform or a digital community space. Oh, the, the fire just well, it's got so high. So whoever asked that question, that might be the answer for you. My, I've got a flame going, a candle going right now. Maybe your community shouldn't be on Mighty Networks. Maybe it should be somewhere else. You want to go where your community is. And that can mean doing a little research, asking people like, have you ever tried this platform called Mighty Networks? Would you hang out there if we made something? Or maybe they hang out on Slack or maybe they hang out on Facebook. I don't know. Everyone's, everyone's community is different. Um, but incentivize them, bring, give them a reason to join, right? We all, we're human. We need something to like pull us from our day-to-day, -day, the norm, our habitual, and to change our habits. So that's what you're up against. And there are plenty of ways to change habits. We just need to like make not having the habit more painful than doing the habit. Right. So you're like, you can say like, you're missing a lot of cool shit. Or you're missing this amazing event. Or the only way you can sign up for this event is to sign up on Mighty Networks and then they join Mighty Networks or your community or whatever it might be. Do you or anyone here have a tarot spread for ideal community member casting? Oh, that's a really good question, Riv. You might want to try the, the casting that's in the content creation doc, uh, the Notion content creation doc, because that's about who you're talking to. Um, and you also might wanna try the client casting in IWA. I don't think that your client will be that different than who's in your community. I think that your ideal client typically is someone who wants to be in your community. They wanna listen and contribute and be, be with you, you know, hang out with you. Um, but maybe not, I could be, I could be wrong. Um, all right. Daniela, I wanted to ask about your experience with events. Since they're limited, do you recommend webinars or having one-on-one -on -one conversations with followers? Oh, okay. Um, know thyself. I am a one-on-one -on -one person. I'm an introvert. I'm an INFJ. I'm a projector. My energy is like a laser beam. I'm not good in groups. I get lost. And like, I know that my energy is like one-to-one -one like this. So that works for me. Even like groups like this, I'm not, I'm not best at teaching large groups. I'm best with like a group of three people or like one person. And that's okay. I know that about myself now, but um, I think that your human design can really help understanding your energy type. I also think understanding your mercury. Um, I see Alex nodding her head. I think understanding where your mercury placement is in your natal chart can also really help. I'm a mercury Aquarius. So um, I'm like very <laughs> Could you tell I'm really fucking direct? Um, and just knowing that about myself and that that's the way I like to communicate. I don't like small talk. And so sometimes like cocktail hour group things, I'm just like, I would rather be anywhere else but here, truly picking up dog shit. I'd rather do anything but this. I wanna go deep with someone and that tends to be easier to do one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but know yourself. Maybe you're like, I'm amazing at hosting groups host groups, host events. If you love that shit, like do it, do what works for you. There's no one size fits all here, right? Just like magic, just like a spell. There are general frameworks and general rules that we want to understand. So we don't like absolutely fuck shit up, right? And like accidentally light the world on fire. But within that, there's so much flexibility to do it our way and to find our way. Um, I hope that answers your question. I didn't mean to drop the F word so many times. In emails, you're trying to share information, but also want them to shop. How would you advise doing that? Oh yeah, that's a great question. I mean, that's what advertorial content is. And so I think the best content we can, uh, we call it the release runway in PCCL. And basically your release runway is a period of time before your product goes live or 
before you have a big release or a release, a launch event, that you're priming people to get excited and ready for that product. And we're doing it subconsciously or unconsciously in a way, right? Because we're create, we're tuning into what our client needs or where our client is in their mindset and what our product is. And then we think about what we, they need to know or understand in order to orient themselves towards the product or service that we have. Like, let's say that I'm trying to sell this. Um, okay, I'm making calendula honey right now. So I grow calendula in my backyard. And so maybe like, you're like, okay, cool. You're a witch. We get it. You said it a million times. I'm like, no, no, no. Calendula honey is really important because calendula is um, amazing for your skin. So if you have acne and honey is like so good for your skin too. So if you've got acne, you can put this on your skin it'll calm it down. It'll make it smooth. So I need to educate you. I can't just, even if you have pimples, I can't just be like calendula honey. Am I right? I need to educate you on why that thing is valuable, why you might need it. And then also something that we we're constantly thinking about is future visioning for ideal client. So many of us, we talk about this a lot in PCCL because it's a big, it's a big spell casting copywriting concept. It's very difficult for us to see the future, especially the future for ourselves. When we see a product, we have to create a future with it. When we see a service, we have to create a future with it. We have to understand the transformation that we're going to undergo when we buy this thing or when we use this thing and what our life will look like on the other side of that transformation. So Maybe your transformation will look like I have clear skin and I don't have to use the filters on Instagram anymore, or I wake up and I feel confident, or I, my transformation in my future life is I actually make the time every night to like pamper myself because I have this space and self-respect of my, over my body, right? Whatever. I'm pulling this out of my butt. Um, to, because that's the transformation I want to undergo. And that's the future vision I'm holding for myself. And often when we're creating products and services for people, they don't know what that future vision looks like. And that's why they haven't taken the leap. That's why they haven't changed because they don't see what their future could be. They don't understand. They can't embody that transformation yet because they don't believe it's possible. So a lot of what you're, we're trying to do is show them what the future could be like, hold the vision for them and then say like, is this, a, is this a future you want? Yes or no. It's okay if you don't want it. Again, we're just trying to help people make a decision as to something, whether something's right for them or not. Um, but I, sorry, Caroline, I, I went a little off topic there, but I think that that applies across the board. You know, we're not just making straight advertorial content where we're like name dropping a product in a blog post or in an email. We're creating that breadcrumb to that future. And we're educating people on why that product is valuable and important to them and why it could help them and change their life potentially, or give them a transformation. I hope that answers your question. Oh, incentivize Exodus. I love that Rose. Z, how can we connect afterwards with the community of people in this room? Is that your answer? Is that answer your mighty network? Yeah, we have a mighty networks group, Holisticism Hub. It's free and um, you all can connect there. And I would love to connect with you there. We have events like this. We have lots of conversations. It's very fun. And then some all of our communities inside of the Holisticism Hub are paid communities like the CUSP and the North Node and then our courses. So PCCL will have its own community um, all live inside there. It's really, really fun. Uh, uh yes, Atomic Habits tidbit. I'm sure I dropped some of that. I always borrow from it. Um, okay. How did you first start your community with your friends or colleagues? How did it all get started? Um, no, it started with some people that I worked with that I, I actually emailed every person. I had a list of a hundred people and, um, that like I knew off the top of my head from my work email, from my personal life. And I emailed every single one of them individually. And I said, I think I'm going to start a newsletter about wellness and the weird parts of wellness and how to make it more accessible and less like Gwyneth Paltrow. Would you be down for that? And a lot of them said yes. And a lot of them said no. And I was like, cool, I'm going to send you an email. Please don't unsubscribe <laughs> or like, just wait a couple months to unsubscribe. And then, um, and then I asked every single person if there was one person in their life who might like it, would you mind forwarding it to them? Or would you mind inviting them in? And then um, they did. And that was just enrolling them, right? And what, what I was up to and what we were creating together because I wanted to create this, this space with them and talk about the things that 
these conversations that we were having in like side rooms and, you know, on text threads, um, but that, that weren't out in the open yet. And then we started having events, in-person events, and then we shifted to online events and it all grew from there. Um, okay. All right. Lots of, oh, lots of Mercury people. I love it. Um, all right. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay. Yes. Lots of people have to run. I'm just seeing if there are any questions. Oh, how can someone reach out to get more press? I'm so sorry, Daniela. I'm definitely not the right person, not the right person to ask because I am allergic to press and I'm a projector. So I do not reach out to do that. Um, like I barely reach out to my friends to hang out with them. I just like send them laser beam ideas and like, let's hang out, let's hang out, let's hang out. And then I cross my fingers and I hope that they text me. Sometimes it works. Um, by the way, I'm looking for more friends. No, just kidding. Um, so I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, but, um, I think that you, one of the, as an editor, as someone who was an editor, I think one of the best ways that you can, um, get press is to make it easy for people to say yes to you. So when you, in every situation, right, we already talked about that, but if we're talking about editorial, let's say you want to be in an article on Bustle, or you want to be a source for well and good, you have to reach out to the person who's on that beat and say, or the beat, like what you want to talk about, right? Who covers that and let them know that you're available. Hey, here's who I am. Here's my credentials. Here's what I can help you on because writers are always looking, press people are always looking for, um, you know, experts to come in and give commentary. And so if you can just like get on their radar and let them know that you're available and that you're down to talk about X, Y, Z topics, if they need any help, then like, dope, that's sweet. And let them know what your expertise is and why they should trust you. Um, that's what I would do. And I used to love getting those emails as an editor because it made my job a lot easier. Um, and by the way, longer is not better when it comes to email, make it short, make it sweet have one call to action, just like what we talked about here. So you want them to do one thing, use you as a source. Uh -oh. Um, oh, yes. If you want the discount code for North Node, just private message me and I will send it to you, my homies. Um, North Node is our private members community and um, they're the best. And um, one of the perks is that you get discounts on all of our offerings. Um, so yeah, I think this is it. <laughs> okay. Um, going to bed because it's 1122. Yes, please go, go to bed. Um, all right. Are there any more questions that I can answer? Um, I know that we went a lot over time, but I just want to make sure that I'm like packing it all in. You know what I'm saying? Um, Thanks, cutting glass link. It's okay. It's Jane, um, Jane Ito. She's amazing. Your life is going to be changed. She's incredible. Uh, where can we get a recording of this class? Patrick, I will email it to you. Um, my North Noters. Um, oh, there's a question about how people collaborate with holisticism. That's a great question. I'm a projector, so I will probably not reach out to you, but I love when you reach out to me. And I have an email a template that, that I use, that I love to use. I love to see when people send it to me that you don't have to do that. Um, if you want to collaborate with holisticism, shoot me an email, or you can email Wallace, who I think is on this call. She's Wallace at oh, holisticism. And tell us how you want to work together. And like, let's see how we can do it. You know, we want to always be providing value to our community. Um, and like, we always want to elevate, you know, our vision is making wellness more accessible and inclusive to as many people as possible. And so everything that we do comes from that. So um, if it makes sense and it aligns with that vision and that value proposition for us, then it's a no brainer. Um, so that's always our intention. And um, we love to collaborate and I love to hear your genius ideas because um, I think that that's, that's like what makes the world go around. And just personally, I'm the type of person who likes to collaborate over a long period of time. So I don't like to do like a one-off event. I typically like to do things on a like rolling basis where we can get to know each other and we build up to like working together. That's just kind of who I am and how I like to work. Um, so yeah, um, if you wanna if you wanna collaborate, like reach out to us and um, we would love to talk. <laughs>
And we're always just, like, if we can't help you, if we're not available, we have so many amazing people who we can connect you with who might be even, even a better fit. So it's always worth asking because um, you never know what's going to happen. Ah, prepping for your deep work for rest retreat. Nice, Christine. That's going to be amazing. Um, okay, cool. I feel stuck getting conversation going still. I have people in my mighty network and people will spend my post, but not really with each other. Yeah. Helen, that's a great, that's a great question. We're actually running into this in the cusp, which is our like sort of wellness hype beast community where people are like crazy commenting on posts that we put up that they're not quite posting yet. And part of that is just teaching people how to act. It's like showing them how to interact and how to be. And so what you can do, what I recommend is tapping a couple people on the shoulder and directly messaging them. And remember, leaders empower other leaders. So empower them to share something that they DM'd you like, oh my gosh, I try, have you read this thing or have you seen this video? They're like, oh my God, yeah, I love that. Will you post that in Mighty Networks? I would love for everyone else to see this. Or, oh, you enjoyed the workout today? Amazing, I'm so happy to hear that. I think you'll really inspire the people um, who haven't worked out today or who haven't tried it yet. Will you post it in Mighty Networks? I would so appreciate it because that's all the community is, right? It's like asking us to be there for each other and empower each other. Uh, so that would be my recommendation to like get the flow going. I also think that if you can eventually, so there was a projector who was like, I don't want to be burnt out. And I totally get that. If you can get a community manager at some point after you grow to a certain level, you'll know when the tipping point is. Usually you need a community manager for like two to five hours a week. It's not a big job, but it's just someone who kind of checks in maybe 20 minutes every day. It doesn't have to be a big job. It can eventually be a very big job, but it can be like a really light job that a VA can do or a friend can do, or even a member of your community can do. And um, you would pay them obviously, but they're kind of like your support. And they're another person who can sort of step up into leadership and model how to be an act. Um, so I think that that's really helpful and you can have people who are community, like sort of like your honorary community managers, right. Or your super fans who are, um, leading and acting for you. I will say something that we learned just recently, some feedback that we got at holisticism is we have this amazing community in the North node. We have people who've been in the North node for a year and a half who are like mega experts who are so helpful and incredible. Some of them are coming to mind. Some of them are in this call right now. We didn't have a really clear way to show that those people had been around for a long time. And so we're working right now to create badges for them so that people know, oh, Karen is like an OG member of the North Node. Like she has cred. So when she posts and I see that badge, like I know that she's a leader in this space. Hey, Karen. <laughs> yes, Karen's awesome. Karen, Karen is such an important part, member of our community. So many people in our community, like they, they bring their own like unique essence and that's what makes that community so special. And we need to acknowledge them too. And so we're learning constantly of like, oh, here's how we could do that better. Here's how we, um, so we're overdoing it. It's, it's give and take. Um, but I'm really excited about that. How long does it take to get admitted to the North Node? I sent a request a couple weeks ago. Um, if you joined the North Node in June, in January, then you got, um, if you paid for it and you joined the community and you have access in Kajabi, then you should have instant access. But if you joined um, Dania and you haven't gotten admitted yet, um, just PM uh, Janelle, direct message Janelle, and she'll make sure to add you. We have some people who request to be added who, who haven't actually joined because um, there's a little bit of confusion there. So just let us know. Sometimes we get lots of, of requests and things get lost in the shuffle. So I'm so sorry if that happened. Um, okay. Are there any more questions? I can't believe you all are still here 90 minutes in. Um, any more questions that I can answer for you um, that have to do with content or not content, like I'm happy to, or community, um, you've got me. I love you, Adria. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about like whatever you want, Calendula, honey, anyone. Um, but really like um, I've, got, I've got 30 minutes left on my calendar to be here with you if that is what you desire, so. We also could go all go pour ourselves a non-alcoholic beverage if we'd like. That that sounds good too. I would like to talk for 90 minutes about calendula. <laughs> I think that I would run out of content, but I could totally spitball. 
trying to decide between mighty networks and circle another day um you and worry that not enough people know about circle even though it might be a better fit okay so i'm like the queen of just trying tons of communities because i just want to see how other people are doing things and a lot of people are joining circle and so I wouldn't be worried about it because I think it's going to have a pretty high adoption rate. And then I think it's going to be like Mighty Networks in the next three to six months. Um, I also think it's an amazing platform. So if that's what you're feeling into, I would go there. It's so easy to learn. Um, it's like so intuitive. I think that Mighty Networks sometimes is not intuitive um, and that it can be detrimental. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You also can give you can just, I would do like 10 customer calls and I would walk people through each platform and I would just say like, which one do you like more? Here's what Mighty Networks looks like. You can pull up, you know, the North Node and be like, here's what it looks like inside. And then you can pull up Circle and be like, this is what it looks like inside. What do you think of both of these places and how do they make you feel? Um, you know, you might as well ask the people because they're going to be the ones using it. Um, any advice? Any advice about what types of info to share on Mighty Networks in a way that pe keeps people engaged? Um, yes, Alyssa, I think it depends on the type of content and the community that you're building. So like, why are we all coming together? What is, what's our purpose? Like, why are we all here? What are we standing around the digital campfire to share and to say? And sometimes that means testing you know i think that the best content asks that where people are coming and sharing asks people to share about themselves and to share about their own experiences we tend to be more open to sharing experiences that have gone well for us as opposed to sharing vulnerable experiences so if your intro question is like you know when was the last time you shat your pants? Like most people are probably not gonna answer that one, right? But if you were like, when is the last time you, uh, I don't know, what was the last thing that you saved on Instagram that inspired you? Like a lot more people would probably reply to that. And you build up that no like and trust factor over time. Another thing, just like viral content or content that um, really gets people going and engaged is um, what I like to call like a knowledge bomb. And knowledge bomb content does really well on Instagram, but I've noticed it also does really well in communities. And it's effectively when you put together an idea or a concept and you articulate it very intelligently, like in a buttoned up way or in a way that like is really clear and succinct. And people have that head nod moment of being like, that is totally what I think. And you just said it way smarter than like how I would normally say it. And people want to jump on that, especially when they feel seen, when they have that head nod moment of like, yes, we think the same way, we're simpatico. Um, that really brings them out of the woodwork. So that would be my recommendation is like, think about what your knowledge bomb, what that like knowledge drop could be. Um, sometimes knowledge drops can be um, content that is like, I don't know, I don't want to say cagey, but like content that isn't content that's controversial, like a controversial, controversial opinion. Typically, that's what go, that's what makes people nod their heads and be like, yeah, I think that too. I also think that Reese's Puffs are the best, most underrated cereal and nobody talks about it. And we, you, we are getting it. Like we're on the same page, you know? Um, so we talk about viral content inside of PCCL and and like how to find the content that works for you because uh, not all the content is gonna be shock content. Not all content is gonna be like clickbait, you know? I, I don't want my content to be clickbait. Uh, we, we were, we've we been working on the podcast lately. And when we first started, we were like, maybe we just need to make like 15 minute episodes that are super short and sweet and like just the information. And the more we started making them, I don't know. I was like, I just want to spend time with people. Like I want to spend the time that we don't always get to spend time, spend together, like talking and, um, yeah, a, a, a deep dive episode. Exactly. Like I want to spend two hours with you. Like I want to be with you. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you're like, I'm married, <laughs> but really I want to be, I want to hang out with you. Um, because I think that that's really important and that's what we do here. We don't really, 
I'm a Scorpio moon. We don't do like surface. We go deep. So um, that's what's authentic and true to me. And probably, we're probably never going to have like 10 minute episodes on the podcast. And that means that a lot of people aren't going to subscribe because you're going to be like, this bitch loves to talk, but that's okay. Like that's who I am. And that's like who my community is. So um, <laughs> ask me if I was talking to a ghost, spooky ghost. That's me. Um, yes, 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 yes. Oh, thank you. Colin Hula. Ah, thank you. Someone just corrected me that the, the way tradition to traditionally pronounce it is Colin Hula. Thank you. I am so grateful for that correction. Love that. Um, okay. I hope that answers your question, Alyssa. Okay. Great, great, great. Lovely. <laughs> Seed lip is just, is thick, expensive water. Yes, it is. It makes me so angry. <laughs> um, Helen, I also struggle with what is a blog, what is a newsletter, what is Mighty Networks content, and what is the difference? Yeah, you can, so I'm a huge fan of repurposing. Remember how I said, like, I want it to be easy? Bye, bye everyone who um, has to go, and I know that we've gone far over time, but um, like, I want it to be easy. So how can I repurpose my content knowing that not everyone who's going to listen to the podcast is going to be a blog reader, is going to be an email reader. Like typically when I see like my friend Katie, right? Katie just released a podcast with Helen. I don't read Katie's emails. Love Katie. Don't read her emails. But I listen to her podcast and I follow her on IG. And sometimes I see her like little tiny story on IG before I go and listen to the podcast episode. And it's the same content. She's just repurposing it. She's putting it in two different places and a somewhat different context. And so uh, I don't think you need to like make brand new stuff. I think it's just sort of repackaging it for the space. All right. I I feel like we've maybe hit our, <laughs> we've hit the wall because we're having people leave. Um, my pleasure. Yeah. And thank you, Karen, for jumping in. But um, is there any final questions that I can answer before we all say goodbye and we go on with our days? I'm going to drop the link for PCCL one time, one more time, just a heads up. Um, the price, so it's seven, I think I said this, but it's uh, 777 right now. And the price is gonna go, this is the early bird price. And the price will go up every week until April 17th, where we get to the actual price. So uh, this week it's 777, next Friday will be 888. Week after that will be 999. And then we'll get to the actual price of the product. So if you want in on that early bird price, then um, you have some time, you have a week until the price changes. And, um, oh, I'm so glad that it's, it's landing. Yay. Great. Um, and if you have any questions, just let us know. I love you. This was so fun. We should do this every week. Let's do it next week. Uh, we have another class. I do not know what it's on. I can't remember, but it's going to be good. We've got like class on copywriting. These are all recession proof skills classes, um, inspired by a pandemic. Um, and, I graduated from college with an art degree in 2010. So uh, recession-proof skills have been my love language for a long time. So I'm excited to teach them to you and um, excited to hear how they work for you. But this is so fun. Thanks for joining. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And um, we'll talk to you soon. Happy Friday. Talk to you later. Bye.